All right, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Realism Overhaul. Uh, we have here the SOAR 3 on the launch pad, ready to take a Kerbal up into orbit and perform our first EVAs. First stage being four RD-108s and four LR-89s to get us off the launch pad. The next stage being just one LR-89, following a total of five AJ-10s for the third stage, and then just the usual one AJ-10 to do our orbital maneuvers. And now this is still running with a little bit of KOS, but I stripped it down a lot to basically only help with our ascent. Um, it's, it's going to pitch us over one degree every 650 meters again, and then after that, it will give full control to me. Uh, so it does help with the launch, but other than that, I will be able to adjust the orbit as needed. And here we see here we've got both our astronaut complex underway and I believe our tracking center. Uh, both getting renovated, getting new upgrades, so we'll be able to EVA and then plan maneuvers in space, which will help us a lot. Now we're warping to the actual rocket here and rolling it out. We're going to try to align the planes again, just doing this manually, just by sight. Which, for this kind of a launch, it's it's perfectly fine. Uh, the only launches I've done were straight east, so we just line up the orbit there and we can launch. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be a night launch. Uh, right now, I have a mod that actually makes everything very, very dark at night. So without the lights that I put up on that capsule, we wouldn't be able to see much. You saw here uh, one of the boosters exploding after it jettisoned off. That is a side effect that wasn't intended, but <laughs> it didn't cause any problems. All right, already up to our second stage here. Uh, you notice uh, from episode two, we actually have an entirely new capsule instead of the old one. And the only main difference that there is, other than the design, is that this one is actually slightly lighter. Alright, now we're going to slowly drift away in the darkness here. And give us one last boost, and then we'll be in orbit. And that's all it took. The rest of the rocket should fall back into the atmosphere, leaving no debris. And that's, that's the way I like to do things around here. And now we are orbiting the Earth a few times, and this next run, we're going to perform a test EVA to make sure everything works correctly, and make sure there's no problems. And Kirk is going to get out, stretch his legs, take a look at the spacecraft and the amazing view of Earth from in space. On board this spacecraft, we do have enough supplies to last us about three days in space, which is definitely more than enough to, to perform this mission. And that mission being the same that SOAR 1 and 2 sought to accomplish, and that was to get into orbit with a crew of one, rendezvous with a satellite that we set up in episode 1, uh, the film return camera and then collect the science from it that we can. And the problem with SOAR 1 was a completely failed launch. It ended up demolishing the entire uh, VAB, actually. And SOAR 2 uh, didn't have as much of a problem with engine failures, but it did end up having an engine failure. But. The problem with SOAR 2, even after it got up into orbit, was it did not have enough Delta V, it didn't have enough fuel to actually get a rendezvous. And uh, SOAR 3 actually has 1000 meters per second more Delta V once in orbit than SOAR 2 and SOAR 1 had. 
So this keeps, this completely eliminates that problem that we had. And what we're doing now is setting up a rendezvous. We're getting a close approach, uh, a little over 10 kilometers, I believe. All right, and here we're gonna burn to kill our velocity at our closest approach of a little over 10 kilometers away from the film return camera. Alright, here we are aligning the planes, We're trying to bring that relative inclination down to zero, as close to it as possible. I think we got directly to zero. Yep. That will help us get a close approach to the target as close as we possibly can get. Alright, now we're gonna just over here and we're gonna kill our relative velocity which actually will bring our separation at closest approach to about 500 meters I think we could get yeah it'll see me here over correcting I didn't realize that we gotten that close of approach already All right, just setting an alarm so I don't warp past it. Then we'll actually see that we do have it in view. What I'm doing here is fine-tuning the closest approach. I think we get it down to nine meters. If I'm not mistaken, gotta kill the velocity first. And now that our velocity is killed, we can point at our target and move our prograde towards the target and get us closer. And as we're passing over Africa is when we're going to get our approach. And here we're just going to slowly creep our way towards the film return camera. Careful to get close enough, but not too close that we might hit it. Then we're going to stop next to it. And EVA and grab that science. Now the film return camera, uh, it can take a picture in every biome. So what I'm going to be doing here is uh, recovering the film and sending it back to the capsule and then allowing the camera to take another picture in a new biome and rinse and repeat.
You'll notice actually the film return camera is ever so slowly spinning and that was due to a problem of the decoupler from the Psycom Sat launch vehicle that I launched up in episode one. I uh, kinda kinda let go of it pretty harshly and left it spinning like that. Luckily, it's slow enough that it doesn't cause any problems here, though. All right, right here we notice there's no biomes um, until we cross over the dark side of Earth one more time. So I'm just trying to stay as close as I can to the satellite here until we reach the uh, reach night, and then we'll time warp past night here until the day side again when we when we uh, regain visual, and then I can fine tune another closest approach to it. just before we hit South America. Because I know for a fact there's some new biomes that the camera hasn't gained science from yet. So we'll go ahead and grab these. I'm just trying to Make myself as stationary as possible relative to the vehicles nearby. trying to get I think we got every biome that we could other than poles which was for obvious reasons uh, the camera was not launched up into a polar orbit and at this point we need to pass the dark side of earth one more time because there was one biome I had not yet gotten and that was mountains and luckily uh, it's passing over the west coast of South America, which happens to have a mountain biome. So right now I'm setting up another close approach. And that will happen in, I believe, 14 minutes from that point. And switching back to the camera and waiting for that, uh, that mountain biome to approach. So we can get one more uh, piece of science from this. I think that was 15 science for each uh, for each film returned, which that's that's pretty good. I'm glad we went up and got these. There we go. That's the mountain biome. Now we just have to wait until our close approach, and then kill our velocity one more time when we're right next to the satellite. We got all the science, now we just need to get ourselves away from the satellite. So that our recircularization burn and our deorbit burn don't affect the satellite at all. Here I'm just planning that now. And adding an alarm so we don't overshoot at all. Alright, with this first burn we are back in a circularized low earth orbit and then this small burn here will deorbit us and I'm just making some adjustments here I found uh, about 70 75 kilometers uh, to be pretty much ideal for uh, for re-entry at least for crewed vehicles because the uh, g-forces usually it's highest around about 9 G's 
and there's just enough ablator that the capsule itself, which it, it has 20 ablator on it, um, and it goes down to, I think, 9 or 6 ablator left, and the actual heat shield underneath it has 200, and I believe there was... There, there wasn't much left, but it was just enough to return from low earth orbit. And in simulations, I've tested this in a highly eccentric orbit, and you'll notice I have two heat shields on the bottom of this capsule, and the reason why is with a highly eccentric orbit, uh, that first heat shield actually burns completely off and goes down to the second one. And that's important because this, this vehicle, uh, it can run missions a little bit farther than just low Earth orbit. And you actually notice there the antennas did blow off. Alright, another safe re-entry. Our parachute is deployed, and then it will uh, detach our batteries and life support, as well as the heat shields right there. And let it fall to the ground. And our Kerbal re will return safely to Earth with, I believe, 90 science from the EVA crew report and all of the film returned. And uh, actually, this, it's pretty much one of the one of the only times where a rocket sent up for the first time doesn't fail in any way whatsoever. But I can say I'm pretty proud of that. Landed and returned to him safely. Thank you so much for watching, and peace out.